a city that's in absolute turmoil. One student is dead. Everybody's against everybody. More than 20 others are hurt. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. We brought all these Haitians in to try to help turn Springfield around. They're eating the pets. I don't think it needed turned around. They're eating the dogs. For the past few days, Blaze Media National Correspondent Julio Rosas has been in Springfield, Ohio, documenting the Haitian migrant crisis, and he joins us right now. So, Julio, I mean, you you have been there on the scene for quite some time now. So what's the most impactful thing that you've seen up there? Well, so aside from the, the public road safety issue, which is something that uh, I've talked about uh, last time I was here, one of the other issues has been uh, the city of Springfield has been less uh, transparent in ways that are concerning. And one of the ways that has been shown is when we went back to Tremont City and we talked to the police chief, uh, the the radios, the, the, the public emergency radios that uh, Springfield operates like many many other cities across the country that any citizen with a, with a police scanner or anything can listen in on. Um, the city of Springfield is pulled out of that, and so uh, that even affects other municipalities like Tremont City. So actually, while we were talking to the police chief, uh, he said that well, supposedly in the Springfield area where there there have been a report uh, unconfirmed of a of a shooter at or near a school. And the problem is he didn't know about it because Springfield told him through the radio. It's because he heard from another chief from a different uh, locality. And so uh, I asked him, why would Springfield do that? Why would they want to be less transparent? And it's just because he said that they've received so much criticism. There's been so much heat on the city that, you know, if, if you can't hear what they're doing, then you, you, you are able to shield yourself from criticism from the public. And so that's been a kind of a common theme um, that we've talked that, that I've heard from not just people uh, in nearby uh, cities, but people in the in Springfield itself, where they've said that the, the city isn't listening to us um, or or they act like they're listening to us and then they just ignore our concerns. And we've seen that Springfield is not really being transparent with how they are trying to accommodate the, the Haitians and what that means for the services that are offered to its citizens. Julio, one thing that they uh, haven't been able to cover up is the um, car crash, the accident of the bus that everyone knows about uh, and was widely reported. And in this first video that uh, we're going to release here at Blaze News, a series of videos that people can find uh, on YouTube at Blaze News tonight. In the first one, there, there's a long interview with someone who, who goes to that scene and, and sort of explains uh, what happened. Can you explain that to the audience? I mean, talk about that interview and the crash, because one thing I don't think that people fully appreciate is, is how traumatic that was for many kids because of what they saw. And you, you should, you should tell us about it and what they saw. Yeah. So that interview was, uh, with, uh, David Cook. He's a local business owner. He, uh, spent, he spent most of his life in Springfield. He did move away, uh, shortly after uh, graduating college, but, but he's moved back and his family has been here since the sixties. And uh, he had family. He had family that was actually on the bus, not just witness to to the bus. And the reason why that's significant is because, um, you know, th this is something that they that was just unheard of prior prior to last year. And that's why it made national news. But uh, this was this is really the turning point. Uh, the tensions with the problems that the Haitians had been causing in Springfield had been there for 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 a little bit of time. Um, but obviously, when when you're when they're crashing into school buses and and other vehicles and property, and people are getting injured, people are getting killed as a result of that. That's obviously going to raise the stakes, and so uh, that's why you know David took us took us and showed us showed us around because he he wanted us to see that this is something that we don't typically deal with here. And, you know, this is middle America. This is you know this was a city that you can uh you know have a family and be a, and have a comfortable life in, in a small smallish uh, midwestern town but uh because of the influx and and the people that are taking advantage of the situation uh that that's going away um and i've talked to other residents uh since then who who again who have lived there who have lived here for pretty much their whole life never thought they would move away from springfield but because of all the problems that 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 they're now facing 
they're now going to have to move away. And, and again, that's one of the lucky ones because some people have been forced to move away because they can't afford housing here anymore. And that, that that's kind of one thing that they really want to stress is that, you know, the issue is not necessarily, is not necessarily only the, with, when it comes to domesticated animals or, or, or local wildlife going missing, it, it's impacting real people uh, in in many ways, uh, in just being able to drive safely on the road or being able to afford a house. Just just real quick on the bus, though. Just real quick. I mean, the the um, the thing that comes across from what you've done and reported is that a bunch of the children face long lasting effects because of what they saw, right? They and, and they saw uh, one of their classmates die or or the body be carried away. Is that right? Yeah, uh, a lot of the kids, understandably, after that, they didn't want to get back on the school bus. When when, when school had uh, reopened, they uh, one of um, one of the family members uh, had to, as as kind of a negotiating tactic, they 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 convinced their their child to get back on the bus if the mom followed the school bus uh, throughout the entire route until it got to it got to the school. And so, the, you know, the, the mom had to do that for a couple of weeks afterwards before. Uh, the child was finally comfortable enough to to get back on it, but beyond that, I mean, it was nightmares uh, from two different people in, uh, independently. They said that what the children were experiencing was post traumatic stress, essentially. Um, and it, this is from you know, these are young kids, right? So they're not they wouldn't even think about having to go to to, to funerals or or having to deal with these injuries from from being in that bus because it's a school bus, right? There's no seatbelts. Um, and this wasn't a bus that got hit and got moved to the, off to the side of the road. It, it tumbled over, right? It, it rolled over. So that, that's a pretty, uh, dramatic experience to go through on the first, for the first day of school. Julio, in the minute that we have left with you, I mean, let's just talk about the town of Springfield because it was a town of 60,000 people. We know they dropped 20,000 migrants in there. So how is all of this coverage just affecting the town day to day right now? Uh, they're not used to it, um, which is understandable. I mean, they 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 didn't think they'd be in the spotlight uh, in this way, and especially in this manner. And then when you have, uh, and of course, we're in election season, and then you throw in these fake bomb threats that are from overseas, and then you know the Democrats are saying that see this is Republicans, but of course it's it's actually appears to be a form, uh, foreign <laughs> disinformation campaign. Um, they 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 have hope that things can get better. Uh, after the election, uh, you know, should President Trump get back into office? But it, it's a matter of right now they just have to kind of grit their teeth and get 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 through with it. But um, I'll tell you, it's a small town. When when I was walking to dinner last night, I, I ran into people that I had talked to previously, just just completely randomly. But uh, that, that's just kind of a small example of just how kind of everyone knows everybody. And, and the person joked that it's Clark County. There's only two degrees of separation. Uh, for here. So uh, it's it's very, it's not, it's not hard to find people who have been directly impacted by this crisis one way or the other.